Hello everybody, Joe Cool here. I am currently in the fish room behind the uh, Cool Reef 687 and I want to uh, give you guys some pointers about the salinity probe issues that you're all having um, with the Neptune Apex uh, salinity probe. Uh, I think, feel there is three main issues to why uh, you're having problems and I will go over them step by step and discuss them with you um, as we go through this video. Uh, I see everybody posting need help with salinity probe uh, like the um, Neptune is having a uh, reef talk video session and they were asking for questions about they were asking questions about what do we want to do videos on and I saw multiple times uh, for video uh, our for information on their uh, salinity probe uh, calibration and just setup in general. So, if you don't mind my hand moving around a little bit, I'm going to do this here with my phone um, so I can show you some stuff and move around as I talk. Now, there's three main causes for you to have issue, maybe even four, if you consider temperature compensation. Um, to having a selenium probe that you feel you need to keep calibrating or you just can't get it right. First off, you should be able to calibrate it right when you get it and have zero issues with it as far as calibration. Um, I've had it, I have a few different um, Apex systems and I've only had to calibrate the probe once and hopefully after this video you'll be able to do the same thing. So. The first thing is micro bubbles. Once you get your salinity probe, let's just assume you've calibrated your salinity probe with the packets that come with the salinity probe or with your new Apex system. After that, the issues we have to deal with, I would say first is temperature compensation. So, calibrate your salinity probe, get it in your water. I suggest maybe even doing it with pumps off, no skimmer running, get it in your water, no, make sure there's no micro bubbles and all that. Now, take your refractometer, let me grab mine. I'm assuming you know what this is. Um, if you've been reefing, if not, I will show you a handheld auto temperature correcting uh, refractometer. You know where you put the water on and you can check the salinity. Now what you want to do, you know, do a couple of tests to make sure they're all reading right and that and make sure that your 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 viewing uh, area is clean. You don't have any salt buildup on it, maybe rinse it with some RO water and take some samples. Correlate with your uh, probe. Now if you run your tank uh, a little warmer or cooler, your co temperature compensation is going to be different. This is per my um, findings. Maybe uh, if you look at the standard compensate, it's like 2.1 or 2.2 or maybe even 2 for some people, but I think mine's different, mainly because my tank runs 78 degrees most of the time, and I just have it I have it right because I've checked it with also checked it with a Milwaukee um, you know tabletop refractometer and a secondary one so I've, I've quadruple checked to make sure that this reads right and that my water is actually correct with all the settings I'm getting so put your probe in after you've calibrated it in your water that's still that you don't have any you know, same spot you're doing your readings from with your refractometer, and then adjust your top temperature compensation till it reads the same as your refractometer if it's off a little bit to get it exact. All right. Next, let me show you placement in the sump. Now I know a lot of you have smaller sumps because. You just that's what fits into your cabinet or that's what you happen to have 
you have one of these all-in-one units or you know Red Sea or water box aquariums and all that and everything's in a tight compact space um, so you don't really have a lot of uh, choices as far as placement so let me see if I can switch this okay so I'm gonna turn the phone here let's see all right see my probes over here the salinity probe I have a space in my apex probe holding magnet I separated it just for giggles to keep it away from the other the ORP and the pH probe now I even went one step further I have the temperature probe off to the side there's no fluctuation in temperature from here to here in the water over there now I have it on the back wall this side of the sump there's about I don't know 50 gallons worth of live rock in this section of the sump right now and you know it's pretty still my return flow comes into here and the only time I get any bubbles is say when the pump shut off and the water recedes or I'm just starting it back up and before the siphon kicks over so my skimmer sucks from this chamber and then it exhausts over there way away from the probe so I don't really have any issues with micro bubbles now at this point if you do not have any issues with micro bubbles like I don't you will watch your graph and your fusion and see it might it'll fluctuate a little bit as you know you get evaporation and you add fresh water to it it should only fluctuate like 0.2 or 3 ppt I have mine so it never gets over 35 ppt but it might drop down to 49 or I mean 34.8 something like that so it, it'll fluctuate a little bit but it's pretty much pretty straight on on my graph so the next issue that many people have is I'm seeing where you're building these fancy displays for all your you know power bricks you know I have some out here this is a old classic Neptune that I'm not uh, apex that I'm not using at the moment but you know probes are staying in the water anyways besides that um, you know my cabinets not fancy I'll show you it's a little messy but um, let's see here's my head unit over on this side and then I got my power box on this side but what's different is I got all my wires running up top and the probe wires go through this wire loom down through the bottom and the only thing close to it maybe is a USB cable but aside from that nothing is touching or crossing these wires as far as alternating current or AC power or any DC power at that matter other than maybe a USB cable that's close to it now I have the wire looming runs up and around into those probes and there's no pump wires no power bricks no modules nothing let me come back to you that has contact crosses over uh, or is near the probe wires um, I see in these fancy displays you see pictures all the time people have everything crammed into their under their stand or it'll have the power wires and their probe wires running next to each other mm, that's a big no-no but you got to realize like your salinity probe is a conduct conductivity probe it's reading off a of currents so not without going into any kind of electrical engineering or you know how you know electrical wires run and whatnot there's always going to be some kind of interference if you're running um a, you know like the conductivity wire next to a power wire it's going to pick up possibly throw off <clears throat> especially if you have say your return pump 
power wires running down in the sump and it's right next to your sump, um, probe wires. That's going to be an issue. I mainly find this is only an issue with the conductivity probe and not necessarily the pH probes, but I tend to separate them and not have everything compact into one spot. Uh, so that's how you'll save, uh, keep yourself from that issue. Now, the micro bubbles, I would say, is one of the biggest problems once you get past the electrical part. If your probe is good for a couple days and all of a sudden it's reading something that just seems out of the norm and you go in there and you shake the probe and then all of a sudden it goes back to the right reading, you got a micro bubble issue and that's, that's so solvable. So what you can do, they sell filter socks that are made out of mesh, a mesh plastic and with a uh, not as not as small of a micron as you would say you'd want to use to filter out you know stuff in the in the water i mean it will collect some but what you do is you get an oversized one and you zip tie it with a clear zip tie by the way not a black one because the black ones have uv inhibitors and chemicals in them to keep the sun from doing anything to them you don't need that just get the clear or the white ones the non-colored ones zip tie the mesh bag over the exhaust of your uh, skimmer and that will drastically reduce the micro bubbles. I mean it's amazing. You wouldn't think it would but it does. It collects, keeps all the bubbles from going through. The water goes through. Yeah you might get a couple but um, you definitely want to use the oversized, the big one like a six inch. They have draw strings on them. You can buy them without a plastic ring on them. Just make sure you go oversized because you don't want to put a tiny one on there or a little piece of it and it gets clogged up and then your skimmer starts acting funny or it's not working right. So that'll be a really good way to combat micro bubbles. But I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of sumps. You look at the pictures of people have them running. The probes are down in there. There's bubbles everywhere. It looks like clouds. There's so many bubbles in there for the skimmer. And that's a major issue. Even if they're not getting into the tank. So the only other thing you can do is if you still can't get rid of micro bubbles is you can either one, if you don't have, if your weir or your overflow is not creating any bubbles in it, you can stick the probes down inside it. Yeah, you might get some if the water goes down or off. And you can also stick them in your display, either way up high so they're just in the water enough that even when the, you know, the, say you turn a return pump off, and the water goes down that you're not getting um, they're not getting dry so you can stick it in the water near the top of your display preferably where it's not getting a lot of light on it where it grows algae and whatnot but that's another spot you could possibly put it where it's not going to get micro bubbles because it's not in the sump so temperature compensation one micro bubbles major issue with conductivity probes and then power, that's, that's huge too, um, electrical interference. So combat those three things, I don't know why I said four earlier, but combat those three things and you'll be good. I mean, the, technically the fourth one could be placement of the probe next to other probes. I found that it does get interference. If the temperature probe is right next to it, for some reason, it's been a little off. And I've been running these probes for years. Haven't had any issues with them. Um, I've got, you know, I've even had this old one here on standby. I plug it in and it works. The con even the probe that's in the water it reads fine. So, please do not calibrate, 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 calibrate these probes. Don't air soak them, water soak them, this and that. It's pure electrical. There is no soaking needed for these probes. It's not like a pH probe that has a bulb in it and it interacts and can absorb and not absorb moisture, blah, 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 blah. It's a straight electrical electrode sensor in there. And you get it out of the package, you calibrate it, you put it in the water. You know, keep it simple. There shouldn't be any issue right off the bat. I've had zero issues with them myself. I bought them at multiple times throughout the years have multiple systems running them, no issues. So, um, let's follow these few things and then let me know if this helps you out.
hopefully it does. So, peace out, Joe Cool here. Hope this helps you out. Let me know um, if this works for you. And if you have any questions, and maybe I can help you out a little further. Thank you.